Welcome to another year of Poetry Festival Singapore. My name is Giovanni Ortega, and alongside Banu Priya Ponarasu and Zora Imani Smith, we present to you the fourth commissioned work from PFS, entitled Atlas, a lyrical film. We started out with benches, followed by palindromes, and then last year's belonging. Atlas is about the diasporic experience of people who are together and apart. It is the importance of connectedness. Inspired by Contour, a lyrical cartography of Singapore, we hope you can join us from July 30th to August 8th. My generation. Let's go to the moon. Conquer the clusters of stars. Make all our dreams shine for sure. Hello, my name is Shaza Agape and I'm the director of Made of the Memory. I actually got the idea from a literature book I used to read and took for O-levels called Island Voices. It's actually a short story collection, um, like local stories and uh, Mid Autumn by Tan Hui Hui is the key text that I reference to make my short film. I actually wanted to uh, tackle the themes of motherhood and also tradition. Um, through the use of like um, a soul lantern so uh, that was something I wanted to explore in this film and definitely uh, I had me and my crew had a lot of fun making the film as uh, yeah it was just a 1D shoot and I hope that um, like mothers daughters and uh, people young and old can also resonate with my film and yeah <laughs> enjoy the film and enjoy the festival thank you Hi, my name is Nabila Hamida and I'm a director for Living It Returning and this film is based on a poem the same name by Nicole Lim. So I made this film about loss and how humans often hold on to their past and I've always been fascinated by how we go through these cycles of grief and just feeling those emotions again and again throughout your life. These emotions are represented through the actions of the main character in the film who struggles very hard to hold on to what he does not have anymore. So I hope you will enjoy the film at Singapore Poetry Festival. Hi, I'm May, the director of Happy Birthday Akong, which translates to Akong Shanja Kai Lok. This film was inspired by Si Wen Hao's poem titled In Another Home, in which he portrayed the emotional dysfunctionality of the perfect family deemed by the current society on a surface level. Hence, I want to explore the notion of love and how love should be portrayed portrayed through our daily actions and not just through any special occasion and in which this case is the occasion of Akong's birthday. I wanted to also explore the complexity of human emotions in between three characters, Akong, his daughter and his grandson and I hope whoever watches this film will enjoy it at Poetry Festival Singapore. Hi everybody, welcome to Write and Burn Award Ceremony 2021. My name is Crispin and I'm one of the hosts and judges of Write and Burn. So today uh, we would like to show you our 10 finalists as well as announce our top three winners. So let me just introduce you to the judges and the hosts. Um, I'm Crispin, along with me you'll see Nicole. She's my co-host as well as my co-judge and she runs the Tapestry Project. 
uh, whereas I'm a poet as well as an educator. So we had so much fun reading through your entries and um, we really want to share with you what we've put up and, and, and as well as the top three that, uh, finalists that we will be announcing later. So the objectives of Write and Burn are really threefold. Uh, number one, to raise the standards of English language communication by creating a competition platform with the use of spoken word as a performance medium. Our second objective is to encourage expression of personal identity through spoken word. And lastly, to develop emerging young talents like yourself. Our criteria is very simple. Uh, we only have two criteria. Uh, the first is to address the team creatively that accounts for 50%. And secondly, it's the way you perform that accounts for the second 50%. Together, we will judge independently and we put together two scores together to finally arrive at our final score and rank all our performances. So without further ado, we can actually move on to our finalists. Ladies and gentlemen, let me now introduce our 10 finalists of the Write and Burn finals. And without any order of merit, here are our 10 contestants. What we will do is that I will introduce the first three contestants and Nicole will introduce the next three and finally I will introduce the final four contestants uh, for this entire finals. Okay, we will we will sort of put their videos in uh, three, three and four, all right, to encourage you to have an easy viewing at the same time. Our first contestant is Vanati Pugalendi. Nati is currently a year six student from NUS High School and has only recently tried her hand at writing poetry. She enjoys writing about social issues such as the perception of race and the environment and wishes to raise and nurture awareness about such topics through her work. She also enjoys dancing and painting, all the while taking care to convey a story to the audience. Our next contestant is David Kim. David is currently a student of ACS Independent and is an avid reader, writer, and artist. He hopes to keep writing, making, and growing, and aspires to be a doctor and writer when he grows up. And our third contestant is Larissa Lee. Larissa is currently a student of Whitley Secondary School and has always had a passion for writing, be it stories or poetry. Her aspiration since she was young is to publish a book before the age of 20. Larissa has also written many short novels and some songs for certain events for her secondary school. So without further ado, let us invite, let us invite Venati, David and Larissa to read their poems. The deafening silence. Commander gagged. Alert, alert, alas, he realizes. Unmutes with new blockades as he advances. Now stuck in a zoom feline filter, facing faceless actors musing. When the broadcast will terminate, when the broadcast will terminate at noon, never too soon, the bloody clash for territory. Wait for sustenance from far away lands, horseback by leg, the journey is tiring. The green soldier arrives victorious, pounded by rainfall. Pounded by rainfall, the muffled sounds carry over. We huddle together almost in terror on the sofa, noodles and rice in hand. Faster, faster, change the channel. Await the premonition of the master whose ceramic magic cup is blue. Suspense is shattered, shards sharp. Suspense is shattered, shards sharp. We explore only in groups of two, not now, not five. Too perilous for the virus. If it's one man down, then it's two men down. Gun down, it's a crackdown. Here, here, the enemy spares no one. So we hunker down one last time. When will the fight be over? 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 When will it be over? Never we fight on with sweat in our eyes and tears down our faces. We are in facing the mortal enemy. It prowls round the corner. Many survive to tell the chilling tale, the suffocating tightrope between life and death. No taste, no smell. We lost 37 fighters. Remember, one more loss, but don't surrender. Not now, not ever, as long as it prowls round the corner. A mortal enemy it is, not but more wild than any. So one last time, for our comrades, for our commanders, for the nation, for our family, friends, frontliners in Singapore, we hunker down. Title, Sands of the Decade. Normal, guess it's the way it's always been. Talking with the dot, round and round. 
calls high in meter or mile. And not a moment to hear you sigh to the friend you saw but never seen high. And we sit alone at a table for two, not lonely, just one. And it's fine to shut the door out, twirl the hourglass in your fingers, and spill the glass of time a little, powdered sugar off before. The decade's over, hours passed away, years turned none by one, and we turn to each other, one another, and wait for your turn, trust fall into their gaze. So let them lead the way forward, obscured by breath, we keep to ourselves, so whoever we meet, I met, not gone. And we sing, when will it return to the sands of before, the chorus, the past, normal in every strange way, bridge to where the past and future meet. It's never been the same, just normal. I am a being as old as time, but I fear that I may meet my maker. I fear that my stories and words may cease to exist, so I shall pass on my knowledge and wisdom through these words. I have seen many sufferings and much misery, but truth be told, this pandemic is truly a force to be reckoned with. All the deaths and all the pain. It, it drives us all insane. Many have lost their jobs and many more have died from this pandemic. Fear surrounds us, sucking the life out of us like deathly parasites. But push past this haze of mistrust and unease and I'm sure you'll find some amazing things amidst this pandemonium. Families bonding at the dinner table with their stress of work and school lifted. Flora and fauna once again thriving due to less pollution. Of course, it isn't easy adjusting to this new normal. This new normal of wearing masks and social distancing. But as the old saying goes, tough times don't last, but tough people do. We will overcome this and come out stronger than before. We will learn to adapt like our ancestors did. We will persevere and do what's best for our loved ones. This is the new normal and we have to get used to it. For our sakes and for others. Okay, let me just retrieve the bios. There we go. We have Mansha Singh. Mansha has been writing poetry ever since she fell in love with Annabelle Lee by Edgar Allan Poe in 2016. She confesses to frequently zoning out during online classes or completely ignoring them to either read novels or to sleep. She considers her writing style to be influenced by EAP, Rupi Kaur, and Phil K. She wishes to get her poetry out in the world once she has perfected all of them. And next, we have Joy Huang. Joy is a year five student currently studying at Anglo-Chinese School Independent. She thoroughly enjoys dabbling in various artistic pursuits, namely writing poetry and short stories and playing different musical instruments. Something that she's yet to dip her toes into is script writing. So that's something she hopes to be able to do someday. And next we have Russell Um. Russell is currently a student at NUS High. He enjoys writing prose and poetry. He also loves to travel to other countries to experience their food, weather, and culture, which he admits is impossible at this point because of the pandemic. He's also interested in history, such as the events during World War II, which partially inspired him to write this poem. Hello everyone, my name is Mantra Singh and I'm honoured to be the finalist for the Write and Burn Spoken Word competition. My final submission is titled The New Normal, exploring the themes of viewing the same world in a new light while growing up, the inner struggles of understanding human nature and a nod to the ongoing COVID-19 situation. The New Normal Through fogged up glasses, I look at the blurred way forward. Heave a deep sigh, I put one foot in front of the other. The ground isn't stable here, unlike the one my parents bid me goodbye from. 
I can only hope to not lose my balance as I walk on. Half covered faces showing uncovered desperation in naked eyes. Busy bodies blurring past me. Am I being left behind? I pick up my pace. A heavy bag, a rhythmic drum against my aching back. Labored breathing, cheeks warm from effort. I'm running, I'm running as fast as my feet allow. Towards what? Do I really need to know now? Stretching to see what lies beyond the thick fog. I lose sight of the ground I ran on. Down, down, down. Periodic thudding of feet, six feet apart, the only sound. Split knees and tired calves got me bound till a hand reached out of the crowd. Get up, I'll show you around. A firm, warm hold and a comforting voice asked me to behold the world outside the choking hole. Grateful lungs and feet either for the first time, wandering eyes the lover of an explorer's spine, together quench the thirst of a curious mind. Drained spirits of cities that don't sleep, texting people who just can't shut their eyes. Kindest eyes behind thickest masks, oligarchy behind strongest powers. Young shoulders unrelenting in front of harshest words, decisions lying in the hands of undeserved. With space stations, the ultimate pride of Prozac nations, and a five-inch blue light capable to take me on a vacation, I know the world is shrinking. This room can't hold my dreams and I've outgrown the blanket my grandma weaved. In a world that roots its foundation on unstable lands of constant evolving and change the essential essence of relevance. What is new when today's news is old and what was normal anyway? Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Jerry Huang. Today I'll be reciting my poem titled The Twenties Revived. Present days like a pickled maraschino cherry. Red as a ruby, bittersweet as the next brandless bunch caramel ice cream top in the freezer of the nearby convenience store. In the words of some American writer, humorist, entrepreneur, publisher, lecturer, and if I go on any longer, I'd have plagiarized the whole of Wikipedia. In the words of Mark Twain, history never repeats itself, but it does often rhyme. Now to this, I will exert my literary capabilities and apply analysis. Offer my two cents, if you would. Um, although honestly, I'd appraise it at a minimum of eight cents for it to be some extent of what. And like the good global citizen I'm supposed to be, completely whitewash my assignments and make it a point to criticize the economic failures of America or why Brexit should or should not have happened. Effectively having digressed, however, I now return to my original point. In recent years, we have entered the 2020s. The decade, I mean, though I wish it would have been a descriptor for my eyesight, but that's besides the point. They call it the Roaring Twenties for a reason. In the past, and look at us now, <laughs> the only thing that's roaring is the stabbing often in the Bronx, protruding ribbed, aching tooth, wide eye, and a frazzled yellow bird nest on the latest episode of ABC News. Vicarious voluntourism. Coming soon in theaters near you. It's all over the country, I heard. The hit comedy of the century. To which I say, laugh all you still can. Taylor Swift called it the last great American dynasty. And honestly, I don't think she's wrong. I couldn't phrase it better myself. In the past, we had kings and queens. Today, we have a court of jokers. I see the circus sector is low in demand, so much so that the bottom 20% was set to make way for better clouds, better entertainment. Jeez, the third rate must be tough to cope with. Must explain why international news is so funny these days. Future me laughs every time. Just couldn't understand how we turned out this way. Pierrot had to go work a white collar job in the cabinet. Another corporate slave who never comes home at night. Well, at the very least, his arguments could make us laugh. 
Now, I could go on and on about other pertinent global issues and live up to the A-star student, my social studies teacher, thinks I am. But that would require at least a few hundred more lines that I do not have the liberty of including. So, Mr. Twain, my eight cents. If it's true that each day that passes is another point in history, then I wish I'd appreciated 2019 and all its messy politics more. See, I didn't want to write a poem about COVID since I have the rest of my lifetime to write about that. And I wish that 2021 and 2020 did not rhyme as well as it did when the world stood in apprehension for deviation in structure. And as much as I wish, I could wish the future into being wholly wonderful, sentiment is fickle. Nostalgia a joke. Melancholy a pitiful penumbra of history. Scrap Gucci, forget genuity. In the years of 2020, God, I just hope I can end this misery. Thank you. Hello, I'm Russell, and today I will be reading my poem titled The New Normal of Past and Present. The poem describes Singapore's journey from self governance to where we are today, encountering challenges and obstacles along the path but nevertheless still managing to overcome those challenges and revert back to a new normal. <clears throat> the new normal in 1959, our country's journey began. Our first free elections, our first prime minister, our own Singaporean flag, ours to administer. Along came Malaysia with the idea of merger. Briefly, the skies were blue, our hopes for a better future. Yet unhappy was Indonesia, our neighbouring protester. The new normal, tranquility disrupted. Konfrontasi, Indonesia's plot. To protest Singapore and Malaysia tying the knot. But Malaysia wanted more, we could not support. Racially oppressed from the north like British times distraught, and terrorised from the south like Japanese days we forgot. The new normal or not. Malay Peninsula split from inside. Jack Mirror cracked from side to side. 1964, racial riots divide. Dark horizons loom as the people cry when ideologies and races collide. The new normal, dark days of yore. Nation gathered at the coffee shop. Hushed in silence, waiting, the merger of flock. PM Lee, monochrome TV, as his tears drop. Outside, the rain from nebulous clouds falls non-stop. Independence, the winding thorny path ahead, somber backdrop. The new normal, where here our dreams stop. Nation alone, full of despair. Above, the tiger in full glare. Below, the dragon in its lair. Nothing to our name, be it defence, housing or health care. Education, employment, resources, all to be found nowhere. The new normal, helpless fledgling nation. With fear and doubt heavy in the air, the government decree. Some policies and measures our future to guarantee. For housing, we had HDB. And for economy was EDB. Later on came NS for security. The new normal, road to prosperity. In 40 years of time that came, we went from backwater to brightly burning flame. MOE, CPF, MRT, familiar names. In 1990, Go Chop Tong, our second PM, he became. But just a decade later, SARS to set our home aflame. The new normal, our ups and downs. Looking ahead, our progress had to be fast. Looking behind, learning from mistakes of the past. The orchids in the garden, beauty unsurpassed. The Malayan, carved from stones, ideals that shall last. The crescent moon and stars, flying in the wind steadfast. The new normal, our past and present, stark contrast. A black fog is creeping, approaching. Blood red mist at sunset coming. The people collectively trembling. Death is round the corner looming. Above us, crows and ravens circling. The new normal, trepidation. Moving on a year, a new PM conceive. SARS, persona non grata to leave. The masks fall, the sighs of relief. The laughter returns to roost, a reprieve. A year of frozen time that stirs in disbelief. The new normal, we retrieve. A nation alone and small. A tiny boat on an ocean expansive. A tiny red dot, defying expectations, carving our own destiny incisive. But even a boat is subject to the ripples and tides dispersive, much less the tidal wave of recession lumbering towards our shores, massive. The roar of the flood waters that threatens to tear us asunder, aggressive. The new normal, impressionable, susceptible. A nation alone and small, that stands resilient and tall. A tiny red dot, quickly recovering from a fall. The city that breathes life once more, as we recall. By day, businesses and employment, booming in full squall. By night, Clark Key, riverside lights in grandiose sprawl. The new normal, 
Destiny hits our call. Recently, our nation's 50th birthday became to celebrate. Donning red and white, voices alight as we commemorate. The birth of our sovereign nation right up to this day. Sea of red and cloud of white flowing through this nation's state. Feelings of pride blooming within that shall not abate. The new normal holding in our hands our fate. Sea of downcast faces, mouth clad in white. As the days passed and no longer in sight. Spectral fog that obscures horizon, our plight. No return to normalcy, yet not giving up the fight. Sea of monotone expressions, graceful and devoid of light. The new normal, virus in full stride. As the hourglass sand flows silently, days that spill into each other endlessly, reopening in a state of constant transiency, vaccinations that roll out steadily, lives disrupted and yet not, strangely. The new normal, acclimatizing slowly. As our past has shaped the present, from our present the future shall take lesson. Toll of our predecessors incessant, blood of our citizens cements the nation, sweat and tears of our people incandescent. The new normal, our country iridescent. No smooth seas may we have sailed, nor treaded on the rosy path derailed. There were times we may have failed, but our ship the right side up prevailed. The roses we did not see, but their scents inhaled. The new normal, progress uncurtailed. Change the new normal, we can all agree. The cars milling about our tarmac roads, fanatically busy. The people jostling for space in crowded trains, mild apathy. The ships in the harbour, stretching as far as the eye can see. The planes in the air, soaring above the lush rain trees. The flag of our country, swaying in the salty breeze of the sea. The new normal, as far as we can foresee. Thank you. We now move on to our final four readers for this entire event. Our first reader in this final day is Zixian Giselle Chen. Zixian is currently a student in Methodist Girls School Secondary. She's passionate about Taekwondo and technology, which she refers to by an amalgamation of both Taekwondo. Her, her aspirations are to found a startup and to be a black belt in Taekwondo. She writes poetry or rap when she is inspired by sights and experiences she encounters in life on one occasion that the words must rhyme. Next reader is Yogin Ashta. Born in India, Yogin is half Japanese and half Indian. An ardent believer in physical fitness, he is active in the martial arts of Muay Thai and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He is also a cycling enthusiast. Beyond school and fitness, he has a broad range of passions which include writing music, poetry, scripts, performing in plays in Singapore, videography and photography. Upon graduation in 2022, he hopes to study computer science at one of the universities in Singapore while pursuing as many of his other passions. Though he has lived in Singapore briefly, he loves the country for its diversity and for what it offers to young people like himself to succeed and prosper in the future. Our second last reader for today is Yu Tong Lim. Yu Tong is a student at NUS High. Although in the School of Math and Science, she writes in her free time and hopes you don't think of her as just a nerd. And our final reader is Bethan Lo. Bethan is a storyteller who believes that art is about true connection. She's been writing since primary school and aspires to use performance poetry to connect to a wider audience in Singapore. So without further ado, may we present the final four speakers for our Write and Burn finals. This is a poem titled One Nation and the New Normal by Chen Zixian. It is a poem on the theme, The New Normal, and is told from a medical worker's perspective where she recounts how Singapore has coped with COVID-19 so far. Study hard and mad, treating patients on sick beds. A great job, they shared. Then COVID-19 struck. We once were in good stead. Then the pandemic reared its ugly head. Little did we know, we were unprepared. As the virus spread, we had to keep one step ahead, prevent it from becoming cold red. We need a circuit breaker, it was declared. Long, sometimes unbearably so, shifts we led. Our hearts were suddenly filled with dread. A handful of Singaporeans were diagnosed then dead. Their family members, with grief, they wept. To other countries, we have been compared. Our phase two period, we've had to extend. To the second circuit breaker, we've been condemned. Our ways of life have been slightly impaired. The number of cases slowly extends. 
But when faced with a crisis, our resolution has no relent. This public health movement, we are to spearhead. With much effort from society, we will pull in the reins. Thank you so much for your service, they said. Although the virus's spread has not been fully stemmed, we will adapt and with much care will tread. Armed with our mask tokens and infrared, we will keep fighting till the end. Thank you. The tides today. I've identified the importance of human connection, the need for human touch and affection. I've sailed the waves that go up and down. Should I sink, I shall put up a fight till I drown. For if left to fate, the problem won't abate, because some truths are innate, and hurt it will if we negate. Because I've learnt the need to be comfortable alone, for the future is to us unknown. I've learnt to make the best of today, and choose for myself my own pathway. Sometimes I'm demotivated, I lack the drive. But jokes and memes help me revive From the stress that sucks the joy out of me How I yearn for the day that I'm set free The things I could have done, the person I couldn't be Often in my dreams they come and haunt me These nightmares have made me take up journaling Having reflected, I know there's no more point journeying For no matter how much I search with a sense of urgency there's no going back to the old sense of normalcy. So now I've learned to appreciate the little things, to take life one step at a time, like a morning walk when nature's sound rings. Negligence of it is to me a crime. The destination may be distant, but I know that as long as I'm persistent, I'm consistent and to complete this journey, I'm insistent, my dreams shall remain existent. Because maybe the tides rise higher today, and maybe I will sway, but at the end of the day, I will stay at bay. Death wears a crown. Death didn't use to, but then he found one on the market, and he liked the Greek letters pressed into it one by one. Like how wounded waves crashed into us, one by one. People told Death to take it off. It was pompous, one said. Arrogant, too explicit. But recently, Death thinks we might have just learned to live with it. Death reads between the round tables, dotted with round chairs, and someone is desperately trying to rewind time Death. Click, 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 click. People sit in pairs and Death wonders if this is how we plan to end the two-year-strong nightmare, how we plan to reopen, resist, and resign to Death's closed fist simultaneously. Death drops a handful of coins into the fair box, and they tinkle all the way down, like how mankind will make music all the way down. Then he goes and sits right at the back. Someone coughs, the neighbour on the left tenses up, reveals the cracks only time can mend, but time has not mended yet. He eyes the empty seat he could slide into. But there's some point beyond which there's no one do, even with a generous helping of time. So he makes do with pinching the bridge of his nose and tightening the metal ridge. The bus climbs in ascent, and Death is reminded of the roller coaster of ups and downs, laughs and frowns, zero meters one moment, and 150 the next, because they could never really be flattened, and thinks the acceleration has made everyone flighty. At the traffic light, a silver shell of a vehicle stops just outside his window. Death notices that we've stuffed the tuna back into the can, six packs in the lorry and one room to four men. They were essential before, influential during, and are consequential after. But we just had to let their tents, their stories and their dormitories again mark them as less than us. And Death wonders if we couldn't have at least taken away one positive lesson from this fuss. Death strolls along a neighborhood street, and someone's door is left ajar. So Death does what he does best, enter without permission. A 20-year-old is filling out a university application. He's always dreamed of flying somewhere foreign. He pauses, suddenly shackled by the yellow in his skin because some hearts are narrow, and some hate echoes instead of fading away after the scream. In the next room, 
His little sister is writing a poem, and death is a little touch to see is about him. But death wonders why she's trying to immortalize the time that time was frozen, or romanticize the months that she spent stagnant, while some were drowning from inside out, some family trees reached autumn, some lost more than a few friend group hangouts. Death ponders why we are so emotionally inconsistent and self-centered. When Death looks out the window, red and white already billow from the sides of skyscrapers. His anti midas touch leaves things never the same. But he sits by the girl waxing poetic about something bigger than herself and sets down his crown. My worth is not tied to my achievements. I am more than an A grade or 600 points. I am more than results and my value does not disappear like a dream should I fail. I know these, but still I feel the need to achieve, like an urge stirring deep in my belly. The need to prove that I deserve the space I have taken, to justify the resources I have used, that I am the best choice investment at. I need to be better and I need to be the best. I cannot settle, I will not settle for less. Nothing beats the thrill of coming first, of being the one who beat them all, the strongest, smartest, best rehearsed. My ambition overleaps itself and falls on the other with late nights and early mornings and desperate praying to a god I don't believe in, folding together in a blur of pleading and writing and working and crying because I will never be the best at everything and so should never prove I will be allowed to live. Tears and torpor at well-known visitors, tracking lines across the bridge of my nose to wet my pillow, knowledge of I should do something pulling by my cheek but my legs cannot move and my brain cannot work. They cannot comprehend the need to do something should I want more than this, or that exams are tests, waking is a test, smiling is a test, being better is the test, there is no time left for rest. I must be better than them and myself. But there is nothing to show that I am deserving, nothing to prove that my life was not wasted when I myself am long desecrated. Our time is borrowed, so I must use it well, yet on pointless questions I dwell. Who's even keeping score? A question I never asked before, or worse. Am I to be like this forevermore? Hi everyone, welcome back to Write and Burn. Now you've listened to our 10 contestants. Uh, now is the time that we announce our three winners. So for the third place winner, I'll now pass the time to Nicole, who will announce our third place winner. Nicole, please. So in third place, we have Joy Huang. So what we thought um, about Joy's performance is that Clearly, she's a veteran at performance poetry, and we really enjoyed her sense of humor. It was tongue in cheek, and the poem had an interesting take on the new novel and tried to subvert that sense of dismay that was brought on by COVID 19. And um, yeah, we really enjoyed her dry wit. Um, she was very, you know, she utilized her entire body to tell that amazing story. So, yeah, congratulations, Joy, and well done. Fantastic, Joy. Congratulations. Uh, and now let's move on to the second place winner. And in second place, we have Vanati Pugalendi. And uh, we really enjoyed your poem, Vanati. Uh, your poem, Hunker Down, really expressed the sentiments of our time with such clear and emotive quality. Uh, we really love the rhyme and the meter, the meter that really carries such visual and oral imagery. Um, it was beautiful uh, the way that you captured with your captured energy of um, the speed, the confidence with your voice. Uh, really encouraged the judges to to really listen in on your message. So congratulations, Vanati. And I guess we move on to our first place. And first place, Nicole, would you like to announce it, or should we announce it together? I think let's announce it together. All right, fantastic. Okay, and so in first place, we have 
Bethan Low. Low. <laughs> Congrats, Bethan. Uh, well Nicole, done. Maybe you could share a little bit about what you loved about Bethan's speech, uh, Bethan's poem. Yeah, so what I really, uh, what stood out to me, um, you know, when it, when it came to, when I read Bethan, when I listened to, to Bethan was there's such a, there's such a rawness and authenticity to her performance. I felt it was a very emotionally honest piece. And in a way, it reflects how the youths, um, you know, it gives a sense of how the youths of today feel uh, in terms of, you know, the, the stresses that the pandemic has brought upon them. That feeling of, you know, that anxiety that comes with not being good enough, having to do more and more and more. So I, I was quite moved by her performance. And um, I like that she called it Lady Macbeth because, um, you know, it really talks about how our, our sense of self-worth and, and our chase for, for results actually is, you know, the, it, it can become a very toxic mix sometimes. So, yeah. How did you feel, Crispin, when you read, um, when, you, when you saw Bethan's performance? Oh, I was thoroughly moved by Bethan's performance. And like you said, I think it really captured that sentiment of how so many youths today struggle with self-worth, especially when they pack their self-worth to their grades. And some, sometimes it drives them to that, that, that really crazy chase for excellence. And, and I think that um, her poem really captures the intensity of it. And she really brings it across with a very powerful performance. So for me, Lady Macbeth, um, really captures the sentiment of our time. In a way, it is a new normal that that struggle, especially now. You know, we're talking so much about mental health issues among young people. This poem really captures that that sentiment of it, and I I really wish that more people would hear this poem. Yeah. So, congrats, Bethan. Thank you so much. It really moved both of us. Yeah, I really did. Well done, Bethan. Congratulations. Congratulations, Bethan. So on that note, uh, we thank you so much for your participation. We look forward to your participation next year. And so that's it from us at Write and Burn. Um, and we thank you so much. And we look forward to you participating next year and calling all of your friends in. So congrats to our three winners. And this is us signing off. That's Nicole. I'm Crispin. We wish you a pleasant evening ahead. Welcome to another year of Poetry Festival Singapore. My name is Giovanni Ortega, and alongside Banu Priyaponarasu and Zora Imani Smith, we present to you the fourth commissioned work from PFS, entitled Atlas, a lyrical film. We started out with benches, followed by palindromes, and then last year's belonging. Atlas is about the diasporic experience of people who are together and apart. It is the importance of connectedness. Inspired by Contour, a lyrical cartography of Singapore, we hope you can join us from July 30th to August 8th. My generation. Let's go to the moon. Conquer the clusters of stars. Make all our dreams shine for sure. Hi, my name is Yu Zhen and I'm the director of the film called A Day with Finn. 
Previously, it was titled as Yellow Carnation. So this idea came from a book called Me Migrant by Mr. Moku and a little of my past experiences. So generally, it's a very simple film that focuses on an elderly living alone and her, and also focuses on her day-to-day -day ordinary activities. It also explores the theme of life and death and questions the reason and the will to continue living, especially at old age and being left alone. I made this film is not to have any proper conclusion but hope to let audiences ponder individually. Yeah, I think that's about it. I hope you guys will enjoy the film. Thank you. Hello guys, my name is Dan Songsi. I'm the director of Stainless. This film is actually an adaptation of Mr. Chao Tek Sing's poem Zi Zu Si Dian Si Ji or at the self-service laundry. The poem really resonated with me deep, very deeply when I first read it because there was a very gentle melancholy to the entire poem. The poem made me think about why when a person passes on, the body is cremated or buried, but his or her belongings are able to remain where they are. Uh, I feel like much of a person's soul remains in the things that they touch and leave behind, and I wanted to draw parallels in that in my film. Uh, for example, the washing of the mother's clothes to be akin to the cremation of the mother's body that the main character has just been through and that the act of cleaning the mother's essence in her clothes uh, is actually the final goodbye and the last task that the son has to do before, before he can ensure that the mother is able to move on as a whole and in peace into the afterlife. So all in all, I hope you enjoy Stainless at the Singapore Poetry Festival. Thank you. My name is Angel and I'm the director of the film If I Could Fly. So the film idea came about when I read the poem titled Paper Airplanes uh, by Mr. Hidayat Nordin. And in his poem, there was this one line that really impacted me which said, Folded, we became closer. Opened, we remained at peace. And this line became the basis and the soul of what this whole film is about. I wanted to show and depict this main character's struggle and inner turmoil of being tied down to her circumstances. And on the brink of giving up, she meets this little girl who embodies and represents the idea of freedom and innocence. And meeting her has inspired her and allowed her to seek her own freedom and to seek her own second chance, uh, a chance to pursue a different life. And uh, I hope the audience who watch the film can perhaps find their solace in finding their own freedom and finding their own second chances. And finally, I hope you will enjoy the film at the Poetry Festival Singapore. Bye!